Now to this story, there is a decline in uh, South African school learners taking STEM subjects. Um, this is mathematics, science, engineering, as well as technology subjects, which um, has created a skills problem in the country. This is according to the Science, Technology and Innovation Department. The department is on a mission to strengthen South Africa's workforce by championing STEM education. The ministry has been engaging with business chambers across the country, urging them to support initiatives uh, that bridge the gap between the focus on mathematics and science in schools and the development of a skilled, future-ready workforce. Joining us now uh, to unpack this is the head of a deputy is the head of uh, deputy minister's office, Kaya Ngwanyana. Uh, Kaya, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for making time for us uh, this morning. Um, speak to us about what the department has um, has picked up when it comes to. Um, children enrolling in STEM subjects and the impact that this has had on um, the, the country's skills availability. Now, thanks, Adrian. Um, we, we have been um, seized with this matter after extensive uh, interaction with the system, especially the basic education system. And as a result, we have been engaging with the, the Deputy Minister of Basic Education through the Deputy Minister of, of Science, Technology and Innovation. The, 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 the picture is not good, it's quite dire. We have a low intake of STEM subject at school. And um, the, the outcome of that is the fact that every year, the higher rate of the metric pass that we get is not reflective of the, the numbers of students who are ready to go to post-school education and training in different universities to take up uh, critical skills that are in STEM area, which is your engineering, your technology, or mathematics-related subject. And as a result, for, for over a decade now, the country is robbed of those kind of skills. And uh, you will agree with me that those are the kind of skills that uh, the economy now needs. Whether you speak about the digital economy now, your gig economy, whether you speak about the manufacturing industry where you need a lot of uh, engineers, we are lacking on that. So the, 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 the impact and the, the, the causal effect of this in particular in our assessment is that you have pressure points in schools where schools want to produce more results at a metric, at a metric level so that they are rated as one of those mm -hmm. that are, have higher rates of pass. So as a result, they are, there's no effort to push uh, learners into your mathematics, your science, accounting studies so that they take what, what is referred to as easy subjects, uh, which will make them pass in metric. Now, the, the, the intervention that we are making is that we need to emphasize on learners to take mathematics, uh, sciences, and all of that, because that's what the economy of today needs. Even if it means students have to repeat classes so that they get it right, but at the end, it will pay off because that's what the economy needs now, as opposed to your general subjects that are no more in demand in the, in, the, in the economy. So our engagement with the industry is on the basis of that, to work together, to stimulate and put up resources to just help intervene at a basic education level first. Yeah, but has the, has the department um, appraised itself perhaps around what the causes of, of this could be? Because on one end you have the lack of enrollment, but then also for those that have enrolled, there are issues there. For instance, if you look at the trends, uh, trends in international mathematics and science study that was released about two weeks ago, South Africa came number last out of 64 countries uh, when it came to the grade fours as well as grade eights in how they were achieving in mathematics as well as science. Have you looked into that? E yes. Uh, and, and the department is making extensive uh, um, intervention in terms of uh, uh, programmatic formulations around that. W one of the critical factors is the generalized fear for mathematics 
uh, uh, in schools. And I think it extends to even to society. They think that mathematics is for those who are extremely smart. And there's this general stigma that uh, uh, mathematics, science is not for everyone. And, and we are not getting the efforts at a school level from teachers to, to debunk that so that we, 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 we make these kinds of, 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 of subjects uh, much more familiar and likable to the learners. That is one, and, and, and that perception is killing, is killing us because young people don't even want to try yeah. when, when they are at a grade where they must choose the streams. They just opt for easy, easy, easy option. If they do take maths, they take what is called literacy. A mathematical literacy, which, which is not your core maths, which the economy needs. But the second area which we are dealing with the deputy minister, uh, we are busy scheduling formal engagement with the Department of Higher Education and Training, is the fact that we also we've realized that the quality of teachers also who are teaching maths and science, you know, they need to be on a continuous basis, be, be trained and retrained so that they keep up with uh, the, the modernity of the provision of mathematics and science in the modern day. You can imagine someone who went to teacher college in 1992, uh, who still used the same methodology, when today there are many other interventions that are needed to a, a young person. Uh, I mean, in many countries, whether in Asia, in, in Europe, mm. they even use smart ways of teaching these kinds of subjects. So we have agreed that the Department of Higher Education and Training will have to formulate some kind of uh, continuous courses so that refresher courses assist the teachers to, to able to teach at school so that uh, we increase the levels uh, of young people who are, who are the pass rate, but also, you know, the, 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 the positive attitude around these kinds of uh, a subject under the STEM, because otherwise we, we, we are not going to catch up in the economy that requires these in different uh, industries, as we can see it now. I mean, we were looking at the studies that we have commissioned ourselves through our uh, NACI, which is part of our council that advises the minister. In the OECD countries, I mean, uh, South Africa ranks quite below but even in terms of uh, our capacity, in terms of uh, science, technology, and innovation, uh, in part it's because the pipeline is not coming through from the basic education level mm. that feeds into universities so that universities feed the industry, but also the industry themselves are not investing in the sector so that we, we, we actually massify the resources uh, and, and generally the capacity so that we, we, we increase the numbers in, 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 to catch up with the demands of the economy. Yeah, one of the other points that was stressed by the minister is, the deputy minister, is the industry itself and how industry is not spending enough money when it comes to research, development and innovation. In fact, what has happened is that there's been a decline on budget being allocated for the um, research, development and innovation. Yes, that's true. Uh, in fact, these, these engagements that the deputy minister is having with the, the business chambers uh, is in twofold in the sense that whilst we are mobilizing them for the interventions in schools to, to help building laboratories and, and mobile uh, uh, infrastructure, we are also, the deputy minister is making a, a sounding call to the industry that let them go back to invest in the science, technology, and innovation, especially the, the, the research and development, which has been the pillar of, mm. of the industrial development. The moment the industries are not investing in the RDIs, research, development, and innovation, they therefore lag behind in terms of the, the advancement in the economy, the modern technology. So over a decade or more, there's been a decline in investment uh, in, in, in the research development and, and, and innovation. And as a consequence of that, yeah. we can see it in the economy, the fact that most of the technologies even that we have, we have to import them because our, our own industrial capacity 
innovation, development, and diffusion of those technologies into the economy, the prototypes are no more coming through because we are not investing on that. The, the national system of innovation mm. in the country uh, is calling for at least 1% of the GDP has to be spent on the RD, RDI so that you have these new uh, technologies, the prototypes that can be diffused in the economy and therefore catalyze much, much more the operation and production in the industry. So that's the call that we're making because as it said now, government is even superseding the industry. Uh, there's no cooperation even in terms of working with universities who are doing a lot of research, development and innovation. There's no investment by the business even in the science council, like your, like your, uh, 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 your tier which belongs to, to us as a department, your CSIR, who deals with industrial development and new technologies. So all of that is reflecting now in terms of us being at the, at the lowest rung in terms of the new technologies that are advancing the economy going forward compared to our counterparts in Europe, in US, and so on going forward. So that's the call that we're making, that the industry must prioritize budgets in terms of uh, investing in innovation, uh, research, and development. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the current situation when it comes to um, the crop of uh, scientists as well as engineers that the country has, uh, because the concern that was raised before was also that um, the crop that had been there before, um, unfortunately now reaching retirement age, so there's this huge gap that is then le left behind and vacancies that need to be filled, but we don't have the necessary skills. Yes, the, 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 the NRF, uh, is doing uh, quite a, uh, an amazing job in terms of uh, bridging the gap, in terms of uh, targeting young professional, young scientists through different bursary schemes that we have so that we cover the gap. That is, uh, because the system is not, you know, uh, uh, self-correcting. The more they retire, your senior professors, your senior researchers, the replacement has been very difficult, but the program that has been put in place is now uh, attempting to do that, that we, we, we give more bursaries into your young academic, your young researchers. Some of them are sent to, 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 to abroad institutions so that they come back, they get deployed in the system. Obviously, over time, that will show results, but the intervention is beginning to show uh, together with the Department of Higher Education and Training, they also have different programs like the NGAP, where they are uh, targeting your, your, your future academics. Uh, those who, who want to do masters and PhDs, they get, they, 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 they get bursaries so that they are nurtured in the system. They are giving uh, junior lecture positions. Through NRF, they also, you know, get mentored. But over time, we think that, that if that continues, it will begin to uh, make good replacement for those that are, uh, are retiring. But that is true that uh, your senior professor and your senior researcher, on average, they are above 60, which uh, is not good for the country, a developing country like us. That is ambitious in terms of scaling up the level of having good researchers and good research products but also good academics who produces more your PhD, your, your, your postgraduate uh, academic in, in, in the system. So, but uh, we think that that will proceed and, 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 and address that particular lacuna that is uh, already showing in the system.